what's up what's up everybody and welcome to a seneca rising set review set on black and with me in this episode is a my very very good friend and a pseudo black player because he's playing a certain type of archetype that uses black heavily idol sean sean are you there hey good evening guys good evening and i'm gonna be that's um set review partner for today yeah. and we will be reviewing Zendikar of Rising's Color Black. Yeah. So previously on uh, Tero, uh, Tero, uh, M21, uh, we, tried yes, to yes. Rev- yeah, we tried to review everything, me and Arnel and Sean, and it was a grueling task <laughs> because it, <laughs> took, it ate all our time. But it was, it was a good thing because it was in the pandemic. But now... Uh, we have special guests who are excited to set review and I give Sean Black because uh, his favorite archetype, we will not mention what his favorite archetype is, <laughs> uses Black heavily. <laughs> so Sean, uh, before we start our review, um, naana ba kay mga, may mga cards ka na ba nakita na you're very excited to use in any format moving forward? Uh, is this to black alone? Black, oh, yeah. black only. Only in black. Uh, yes, uh, actually in black there is two, Ooh. two cards that I will see, and surprise, surprise, the other one is a common. Oh, a it's common. not a rare. Ah, uh, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's a, a common. common. We will know about that yeah. later. Which card Sean is very excited to, but uh. Let's begin our roundup of our set review for Black, and we will start with, oh, 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 <coughs> with Agadim's Awakening. Agadim's Awakening is a sorcery. Um, our first mythic rare. It has X and triple Black, and it says, "Return from your graveyard to the battlefield any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost X or less." And this is our first, uh, this is our mythic modal card. So uh, if you want to use it as a land, it becomes Agadim the Undercrip. Uh, it's a land that says as Agadim the Undercrip enters the battlefield, you may pay three life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tap and it produces black mana. So Sean, uh, anong masasabi natin sa card na to? Sean. <laughs> so, <Ayun. laughs> okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think this is the final video, na the third, third year, third video. Uh, this is fourth. fourth. The fourth, I skipped. Uh, okay, fourth. So, just for everyone's knowledge, Zendikar Rising introduced the dual face cards with lads, um, Salikod, and the mythics are bolt lands, and the non mythics are tap lands. So, this is part of the cycle. So both lands and based from this um, it fits the formula of the dual face cards that it should be good early and it can be good in the late i think i can see people jamming this on certain decks because this is quite similar to a guilds of ravnica card the, um gruesome ah. no, no, no gruesome menagerie ah, menagerie yeah, 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 gruesome yeah. menagerie that's a five five to cast that uh, raise that one, raise that two, raise that three. Yeah. So, mm, but with the early constructed lists, I don't see any anyone playing this at the moment. In lang, in lang. But how so about I think in, like, uh, um, how about in uh, Rakdos sacrifice decks in standard? Would this be like uh, additional call of the Death Dweller? Uh, the three to cast sorcery black mana in uh, Teros. Would this be, you know, another spell so that you'll pay like six mana and you'll get a three drop, <laughs> a two drop, and a one drop? I think that's too expensive. Oh. So I will. Start, I am gonna have to say uh, it's a no. It's a no. It's it's a no. But in EDH, in EDH, this is a auto include to any graveyard regression yeah. decks. Next, uh, yes, the uh, graveyard toolbox next. Yes, because the effect is so good if you have, especially in the late game, 
the food stretch. But all in all, in uh, competitive uh, formats, uh, and that's a, it's not it's not a good card. <laughs> yes, and uh, with that, Sean, what do you think of Agadim's awakening? Are we gonna be awakened with this in constructed? Is this a yay, a nay, or a <laughs> meh? We are going to be awakened that this wasted a mythic slot oh. in our packs. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in, in limited, do you think that uh, uh, this would be a first? Uh, so in a first pack, first pick uh, draft situation, would you immediately get this card, or you're just gonna look for a another card in that pack? Personally, we would. I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't pick this card if in the first pick in the draft. Yeah. That's how bad it is. Uh, that's a how bad it is, but it's not the nay level. It's a meh. Is it a meh or a nay? Meh. Uh, it's a meh. Uh, it's a meh. And with that, we're gonna proceed with our next mythic. And this one is a bit spicy. <laughs> And this is a legendary creature. Uh, our next mythic is Drana. She is back. Drana, the last blood chief. Drana, the last blood chief, is a legendary creature vampire cleric for three colorless and two black. She has 4-4 four, four and flying. And she says, whenever Drana, the last blood chief, uh, attacks, defending player chooses a non-legendary creature card in your graveyard. You return that card to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. The creature is a vampire in addition to its other types. So, Sean, on graveyard recursion, kinikilig ka. Uh, uh, no. Okay. Okay. Um, if you stop reading sa flying lang, sa flying, yeah. you don't read Okay, um, this fits a very good card, a 5-drop 4-4 four, four flying. It's, a, it's good in draft, it's good in constructed, but the thing is, this is not a good card to build around because it needs to attack first. Good thing sorry, there's, there's a haste, something gives it haste. It needs to attack first, and you have to have critters in your graveyard for it to function well. Yeah. So, I don't know if people are going to be doing like party cleric decks built around this that this gives you um, value by bringing bringing those party back to life but it needs to attack first and it doesn't have haste yeah. so yeah that's another wasted mythic oh, slot for me oh, <laughs> yes our our guess is very strict <coughs> but for me uh, <laughs> i think i can see this as a one of or two of in a mono black devotion deck where you can recur. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh. But the only drawback in that kind of strategy is that the opponent chooses which card from the graveyard comes back. So, uh, but uh, I think uh, the four drop, uh, four drop nightmare creature is still, uh, is still uh, available in standard. So they will compete in the four drop five drop slot along with gray merchant uh because uh dream scenario is that if you have a bunch of permanents in play and you only have a um gray merchant on the graveyard uh one swing with drana and it connects it uh, forces the opponent to choose gray merchant for added damage so i think a mono black devotion deck would be nice in commander vampires is mardu so she would just be a filler slot in the vampires deck so i'm not yes. really excited in uh, for drana in edh and defending player, <laughs> defending player chooses the 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 ability that the opponent gets to choose is really un un so, well. <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> so with, uh, with yeah. you declaring that this is a wa another wasted mythic slot, Sean, Drana the Last Blood Chief, is this a yay, a nay, or a meh? Uh, I'm going to give this a meh because the characteristics or its, uh, its stats are really good. Uh, it's a 5-drop, 4-4 four, four flying. Yeah. That's good enough. Yes. Uh, in, limited, <laughs> in 
limited this would be a oh, huge bomb this is a bomb yes yes hands down this is a this is a wow. wild bomb and uh but uh other than that i just see it in one deck for now uh hopefully we could see it and it's a and i have to agree this is a mech card and with that in mind we're gonna proceed with our third mythic and i i remember we were chatting about this card and uh it brings confusion because it has a lot of uh, words and this card is our third mythic and this is Scour scourge of the skyclaves scourge of the skyclaves is a creature demon for one colorless and one black with uh asterisk asterisk it has kicker kicker of four colorless and one black and it says when you cast this spell if it was kick each player loses half their life rounded up scourge of the skyclaves power and toughness are equal each equal to 20 minus the highest life total among players so sean what do you think of this pseudo death shadow it's actually it's uh i don't have anything in mind right now that built around this card at the moment probably practice aggro decks but the bummer thing about this is its ability requires the highest life total among players so if you have you still have uh, a higher life than your opponent that that would be the basis for its power and toughness i think uh they designed this card in accordance to the bolt lens because you're, 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 gonna be, you're gonna be doing a lot of being life in the early so at most it can be it can be a three three four four and the striking part of this kicker ability is it says when you cast not when it enters the battlefield so if even if it gets countered you still got to lose half everyone everybody lose their loses their life half around it up so uh -huh. <laughs> the opponent has only one life and you cast Scourge of the Skyclaves, uh, will the opponent die? Because it's rounded up, right? Uh, no, uh, uh, rounded up, rounded down in an odd number. It's still, I think it's still one. Oh, it's still it's one. Still one. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, but this has a very... Yeah. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. Yeah, me too. But the, the interesting... Um, interaction with this is with the new mutate card, the Troy. The Ooh, Troy. Okay. Oh, it has life link, right? Ah, no, I know. No, no, no. It, no, the Troy says that you can if it mutates, you return any number of creatures with total the yeah. to power toughness. Total power, I think. Total power of ten. Total power of ten or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. There is a there is a rule in Magic that uh, some cards are technically zero in all zones, but by the time you target this in with the Troy, it automatically checks the life total of the highest life of life total of all players in play. So the funny thing is that. If there is at least one player with a life total above 20, so Scourge of Skyclaves becomes a negative. Okay. Negative. So let's say one player is at 25 life. So Scourge of Skyclaves is minus 5. Minus 5. Yeah. With a certain rule, gets uh, if it's with Nethroy's target, so the total power you'd have to choose would be 15 since it's a negative so you can you can bring this back you can bring it back with uh, netroy netroy along with all creatures with a power of 15 oh in oh okay oh interesting yes <laughs> but that's uh, that's a very like graveyard Toolbox type of EDH, probably. Oh. Yes, yeah, so we can post a link there oh. <laughs> with that picture. Yes, I can post it later. So, yeah, I think that's about it. Oh. So, we'll see a uh, 
uh, image of uh, these two cards uh, going hand in hand to better explain it. But from what I've heard, if you have Netroy in play and Scourge in the graveyard, and if you mutate Netroy, Apex of Death, uh, you can get Scourge along with uh, any number of other cards just for free because Net uh, Scourge has a different... Uh, he has a negative he has a negative uh, power right you you can you can fetch him along with the other creatures that you want to fetch or yes sabay ah sabay ooh okay okay so parang free card na sakay siya ooh okay okay but with that in mind since netroy is also in standard Will we see Scourge <laughs> of the Sky Caves in standard with that kind of combo? <laughs> so, I think I think I will give that guy a high five, even though it's not allowed to have a, so you know social distancing. If somebody does the combo in Paper Magic, I will give him a resounding high five. <laughs> but. Uh, it, it has lots of letters and I cannot see anything. But since you said about the bolt lands, very, yes, yes, so you can now jam uh, at least uh, eight, eight bolt lands, for example, a, a Rakdos deck, mm -hmm. eight bolt lands, and you shock yourself while going aggro. You bolt, so you bolt yourself, you, you a shock and bolt while you're uh -huh. going aggro. So even though you don't need the kicker you still have a two drop that can grow and uh, finish the game uh, as as soon as possible uh equal yeah. with minus the highest life total among players yeah so like if you yeah. have a turn one uh, turn one haste creature so it's like 17 18 on the next turn you still you shock or you put a basic mana land drop so scourge is a two two then you swing again, it becomes a 4-4 four, four or a 1-1, a, or, or a one, one, then a 2-2. Two, two. It grows uh, even though you don't need the kicker. Oh dear, oh my. Na, oh, ah, the bolt lands. Oh. And, and also it works against the opponent using their own bolt lands. Ah, uh, 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 but good thing uh, the shock lands is already uh, out of standard. But I think with the, with the, yes, with the promise of Shocklands in uh, eternal formats like uh, Modern and uh, Legacy, uh, I hope that we could see Scourge of the Skyclaves in play and, uh, you know, go side by side with Death Shadow? Maybe? And do something like that. But with that out of the way, Scourge of the Skyclaves, Sean, what do you think? Yay, nay, or yeah. meh? I, yes, I think I'm just going to, it's going to see in an aggro dex. This is a very good card. Like, if you draw this late game, it, it's going to be a big creature for two mana. Yeah. So yeah, this is. I think I think this is a good card. It I think this is a six, good card. Six to cast, sure uh, threat, and it has flying. Ah, it does. Not no, have it doesn't flying. have. It does not have flying. Does it have? Basically, the, no, it doesn't have. So basically, the kicker just is just there to ensure that he is alive when you have the, all the mana to top deck this late in the game. I think that's just, that's about it. Oh, yes. oh. And uh, that, for me also, that's also a meh because you have to do a lot of things. But <laughs> to but I I hope I can see him in uh, Rakdos Burn in Modern. Because it's looking mighty, mighty fine for a two drop that scales, that scales while you're still doing stuff like shocking yourself and bolting. But yeah, it's yeah. kinda hard. Yeah. But do you think it's it's another wasted mythic slot for black? Uh, no, I think no, no. I think this is a good mythic. Okay. I think it's a good mythic. Yes, I, yes. I I thought uh, Sean would be very strict and all mythics were no, all mythics are crap. <laughs> 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 so that's one one in three there's one there's only one but with that in mind that we're done with all the mythics and we're going to proceed with our rares and the first black rare that we're going to cover is 
Coveted Prize. Coveted Prize is a sorcery for four colorless and one black. And it says this spell costs one generic mana less to cast for each creature in your party. So yeah, party mechanic is here. And it says uh, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. If you have a full party, uh, you may cast a spell with converted mana cost four or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. Sean, what do you think? Uh, okay, the pro okay, there's there's a bit of problem with this card because um, let's see, uh, in most decks that play tutors, it's not a creature deck. Those are mostly combo decks, uh, control decks. So with the design of this card, I think the, they pushed with the mechanic so bad that like you have to go a five four color five color row yeah. that when you when you play this card you automatically automatically get something because even if this card is like three at most three or two at most it's still a worse diabolic tutor that just wasted your turn and if you're a creature deck that doing a four drop on four turn is just a wasted turn so um i i want to be proven around that some there will be decks that could utilize this like you can do the full party and probably drop put a four drop bomb like yeah. naya allies type i don't yes i think that yeah. so for now i don't see anything with this with this card as 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 i have discussed with my other guest uh, about the party mechanic uh, having even two members of a party mechanic uh, it's very hard to do because it requires you to have two colors or if you want the full party it would be like three colors uh, I've, I've seen in the internet a Jeskai party deck so having black on the side would be very hard but uh, if you're like trying to build a five color party deck and uh, this would be an auto include because it helps you find that certain party member that you're missing even though you cannot cast it for free if you can just discount it for two generic mana or three the best uh, it ensures you that you can make a full party the next turn and uh, reap the benefits of uh, having fu a full party but outside of that it's it's very hard it's ah uh, <laughs> uh. Ugh. I mean, you have to go to black. Then, uh, as I've scarred black, uh, it mostly consists of clerics and rogues. So, yes, yes. So you'll only have a discount of two, and you need to have the creatures in play so that this would have be uh, have uh, discount. So it's kind of yeah, 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 yeah. But can you see this in uh, eternal formats? No, definitely no. There's a, why, why would you need the discount tutor if you have like a vampiric tutor, yeah. diabolic, <laughs> demonic tutor, <know>. demonic <laughs> budget tutor? But, yes. Uh, so but in our podcast, we would like to be proven wrong. This is our podcast. Yeah. We are not like we are not aficionados. This is what we see in the cards, and we would love you to break this card for us and make us make us wrong, make us feel wrong. <laughs> but with that out of the way, uh, mixed reviews with coveted prize, but the verdict is, Sean, is coveted prize a yay, a nay, or a meh? Uh, I think it's a nay for me, based on what I've read. Yes, it's a nay, and like I said, uh, Prove us wrong. Build a deck around this that can utilize this shooter. But as of now, it's uh, this card does fit with what you you are aiming to do in a party deck. Yeah, but yeah, uh, the the party deck is really fun to play. I hope it 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 moves to competitive play, and uh, the party mechanic looks very very exciting. But Enough with the party. Yes. Let's let's go with our next rare, and this looks very very spicy, because this is a black rare that everybody is looking for, and this is Hagra Mauling. 
Hagra Mauling is a instant for two colorless, two black. And it says this spell costs one generic mana less to cast if an opponent controls no basic lands. And it just says destroy target creature. But wait, this is our rare black modal card. And you can use it as a land. And it becomes Hagra Brood Pit. Hagra Brood Pit is a land and it enters the battlefield tap and it produces black mana. So, Sean, uh, I feel that you have mixed reviews for this card. What do you think? Yes, I, I actually think um, this is part of the design that uh, encourages players not to play basic lands anymore because of the dual face cards. So, this is going to be a murder at most, at, on, at, for the most part. But the, the, it, this fits the design of dual face cards that it is a good early game, but it also is good when you draw it off the top because it is an instant speed removal. So this is not a very over, overpowered card, but this is also not a very shit card. Yeah. So, so okay lang siya. Okay lang. Oh, oh, okay lang. For me, with the, <laughs> with the ouster of War of the Sparks, we, we might see less uh, Planeswalkers. But, you know, I was hoping that this card had uh, destroyed target Planeswalker also. Because uh, at 4 mana, uh, there in, in Magic's history, there has been much better removal that can deal with Planeswalkers and, uh, and creatures at the same time. Like uh, Vraska's uh, Contempt, which is muy bien. And uh, we still have the Murderous Rider. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I agree. This is a good early and good late. Is this a first pack, first pick bomb for you? I think I would, I would, I would just say it in a trap. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. W with such uh, few words in the card, and uh, since it's a modal <laughs> card... <laughs> It's so easy to review it, but uh, I'm very excited that um, Black Decks will have another tool for the removal suite and uh, also a land, a possible land. So if you don't need removal, it will help you be not mana screwed. And uh, if you're mana flooded already, you can always keep this in hand and act as a removal spell. So with that in mind, Hagra Mauling, Sean, what do you think? Will we see this in standard or nay? Uh, I think we're gonna see this in standard, probably one or two ups because um, I think you were mentioning earlier about black removal that deals with creatures and things walkers. Yeah. Uh, they have distributed that in this set. I think they, I saw three, but it has a specific um, requirement, not not the murder type or not the hero stone fall type. Yeah. So I think they will, they will still see play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's less uh, planeswalkers in standard compared to way back in uh, Ravnica block. So having that card as a land or a spell at the same time is very, very uh, utility toolbox type. Yeah. So with that in mind, uh, we're moving very, very fast because black is sort of... Sort of... Yeah. But with this next rare, I hope we break the the wave of uh, r rares. And uh, this is Inscription of Ruin. Inscription of Ruin is a black sorcery with two colorless and one black. It has kicker with two colorless and two black. And it says, choose one. If this spell was kicked, choose w any number instead. Uh, target opponent discards two cards. Return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And destroy target creature with converted mana cost three or less. Sean, so many words. Please help us out. What do you think of this card? Uh, what, one note lang. When this card was uh, unofficially spoiled, it was an instant. But, uh, well, unof but it was unofficial. Yeah. So everybody was losing their minds. <laughs> like how could how could a mind rot a smother and a claim? Claim? Yeah, claim, yeah. Fame, claim? 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 Uh, how could a mind rot 
smother and claim be in a single card in an instant. So that, that was very good. But at Sorcery, I can see right now that it had the the kicker because the Valencian appeal sa 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 what do you call it? Sa spoiler sa spoiler that if the spell was kicked, you can choose any numbers. So even at sorcery, I think this is a very good card. I think this is a very good card because uh, during in the recent sets, everybody in even in draft, people were playing mind rot like a one, one or two ups. It's a very good card. So how about doing mind rot with an option to have different modes and an option to have all modes. So I think this is a very good card. This is a good card. This is a good card, but what kind of deck can we see this? Would we see this in a control deck or also in an mm. aggressive deck? I think we can see this in control deck like a blue black troll. Ooh. Blue black. Blue black control. Oh, oh, yeah. oh no! Oh no! Oh dear! Oh my! Oh no! Yeah. Uh, the flexibility of this card is very, very good uh, compared with the other inscriptions, uh, because mm -hmm. the blue one is uh, like a haymaker. It's like a, uh, you know, when you cast it with the kicker, it immediately ends a creature-based combat. But since it's blue. Uh, it tends to be like yeah, meh. It's 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 a meh. But this the black one is very very promising, especially in control or aggro decks because it's flexible. Yes. 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 So with uh, that in mind, I uh, in EDH, if you like like cards that has very many utility, uh, you can use this in EDH also. Because the reanimator is good, uh, the destroy target creature is also good. Situational, yes, but since it's very flexible, you can, you know, do what the situation needs. So, with that in mind, Sean, Inscription of Ruin, is this a yay, a nay, or a meh? I think this is a yay. For, for the deck, it's a, this will see play, I think. This will see play, like, probably a one or two off. In control decks, because aside from a mind rat, it can also function as a sorcery speed removal. Yeah. So I think that's that's good enough, and you can return your own creatures. Yeah. And with that said, our next rare, I know that Sean is very uh, excited with our next rare. So <laughs> well, let's uh, let's show the world our next rare, and the next rare is Nighthawk Scavenger. Nighthawk Scavenger is a creature vampire rogue with uh, one colorless and two black. It has flying, death touch, and lifelink. And it has a uh, one plus uh, asterisk uh, power and three toughness. And it just says Nighthawk Scavenger's power is equal to one plus the number of card types among cards in your opponent's graveyards. Sean. <laughs> vampire Nighthawk is back. What do you think? This is a very good card because um, if you followed Vampire Night Talk from even from Zendikar, it's a first pick. Even if it even it got uh, downshifted to uncommon, people would still pick it because a three drop two three flying that touch life link is just too much. Oh, too much. And this card would have been a bad card if its power would only be an asterisk, but they gave it one so. Even. It can still swing even if your opponent is an empty graveyard. Oh dear. Uh, I mean, this is just so good. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a rogue. And it's a rogue, yes. It's and a rogue. It's a rogue. And in Zendikar standard, uh, rogue decks uh, focus on milling. Uh, hmm. So it's, there's the consistency of a uh, Nighthawk scavenger going into like 4-3 uh, four, four, territory. With a land creature and a, in a another spell in the graveyard, so oh, oh my oh my gulai oh wow. Even uh, even if you did the rogue that mills two, and yeah. it, even if you yeah. mill two two the same card types, this is a two three. I mean that's yeah. that's just so good. Oh, it's so good, and it and it's a rogue, so it triggers the the one drop 
Uh, oh, uh, yeah. This yeah. card is very dirty. I feel very dirty with this card. I can also see this in control decks because the mm -hmm. damage is scaling up because you can mm -hmm. remove permanents, fill the opponent's graveyards, slam a vampire, a nighthawk scavenger. And since this is not legendary, you can have four copies of this in play and deal massive amounts of damage and, uh, uh, and gain a bunch of life. So, the, oh, uh, eh, very dirty. Check the, the thing that made this card very powerful is that it, it's all, it's one power. Yeah. So even no matter. Yeah. Uh, eh, so dirty. Can we see this in like uh, modern? Because I can s already see this in a uh, black devotion deck with this card. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. In a modern. In modern. <laughs> no modern that comes into my mind at the moment that uses this, but in standard, this is a good card. This is a good card in standard. Oh, uh, can we? Can we? Do, uh, but this is no Tarmogoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah so this is no Tarmogoy. <laughs> oh, because the toughness is three. In uh, Eternal formats, they can easily dispatch of three toughness creatures, and uh, but still in standard, uh, I am very hopeful. Uh, I hope I could not be proven wrong, but I'm very hopeful that we will see this in standard. My wild cards are waiting for this card specifically. <laughs> <laughs> and with that in mind. Uh, Vampire Nighthawk 2.0. What do you think? Is this a yay, a nay, or a meh? It's definitely a yay. This is a good card. This is definitely a yay. Oh, let's give him the wow. Yes, that's the wow. And uh, with that wow, we move to our next rare. And this rare is um, kind of mixed, but I kind of like. This is one of the rares that I'm very excited to see. And this is Null Priest of Oblivion. Null Priest of Oblivion is a creature vampire cleric with one colorless, one black. 2-1 mana is lifelink with kicker of 3 generic and 1 black. And it says, when Null Priest of Oblivion enters the battlefield, if it was kick, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. John. Ugh, kicker is so nasty, this set. Oh. This is good. Yeah. This is good. Because if you draw this early, it's just probably a menace child of night. Yeah. Ugh. With evasion. If you get blocked to creatures, it has two power. It can probably kill two one one toughness creatures. And it if can, you draw can... this late, if you draw this late in the game, that's a guaranteed plus one card to the battlefield. Yeah, yeah this is good. I can feel, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I can feel uh, somewhat like Titan stats for like a six, six mana many lifelink two one that brings along your bomb. So for example, a black green mid range deck, uh, when your questing beast have been uh, destroyed, uh, you could just cast this for six mana. You'll have a many lifelink two one, and you'll get back your questing beast. And your and your oh, oh this this card is so nasty. Uh, I think also it fits the theme of like trying to resurrect. If you're trying to make a party deck, it can resurrect a rogue or your uh, yeah, or wizard. You're missing party Bird. member. Oh wow. Oh. But this is a good card. Yeah, this is a good card. Yeah, this is a good card. Yeah, for party decks. And Ah, oh, in mid-range decks. Oh, oh, oh. It's so nasty. I, I feel so dirty. Ah. Uh, ah. So, Sean. Null Priest of Oblivion. What do you think of this card? Is this a yay? It is a good card. Yes. It's also a yay. You can even do a vampire. <laughs> oh. can, you, can you do a vampire deck? Turn 2 Null Priest, turn 3 Night Talks Covenger. <laughs> like, oh. vampire, it's a vampire deck. That's a, that's a vampire. Oh, nasty. Uh, tribal vampire party. Uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's so nasty. Oh. I'm gonna give it the wow because this card is really good. Uh, even though it's a two, two drop early, 
it can deal damage because of the evasion and the life link which gives you enough and the life link ah man <laughs> so and, the, and it's a two power yeah, two power a, two drop yeah ah in in limited it's a very good uh, very good mm. for a two drop slot uh, always uh, a pro tip pro tip guys uh in, in limited two drops is very good uh in filling out your deck if you're in doubt uh choose a two drop that's the that's, <laughs> a, that's like a rule of thumb like if if you're if you're having problems in oh what's the one card that we need to put in just to fill the deck a two drop is the best drop <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and with that we move on to our next rare and this rare is 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 very confusing for me but if we read this out loud i might get it but this is shadows verdict shadows verdict is a sorcery for three colorless and two black mana and it says exile all creatures and planeswalkers with converted mana cost three or less from the battlefield and all creature and planeswalker cards with converted mana cost three or less from all graveyards sean why is it five to cast uh, it's uh, yeah, it should be four. But we have this slot for four drops as a normal wrath effects. Yeah. This was placed in five because come on, the, the, when you read this card in your standard player, the first thing that comes into your mind is it answers Uro. I think that's about it. Oh. It answers oh. Uro. <laughs> oh. Uro in the play. Uro in graveyard. Oh, come on. <laughs> Oh, I did not see that again. Oh dear. So technically, black is like reanimator ish. The rares that we have been uh, reviewing have been more like reanimator ish. Then comes along Shadow's Verdict. Ugh. Oh, anti Uro for five. Oh. Yes, but the I think the downside for this, if you're going to play this in a mid range soul tie or green black deck, is it exiles cards from all graveyards so that includes yours as well yeah so you yes. have to also uh. yeah. so you have to put this in a probably control deck or an answer to an oro an opposing oro so at the rare slot this is good this is good in limited this would be a good rare but this would not be our first pick rare am i right yes yes yeah. yes yes ah so just just to clarify for everybody who's still watching this uh, part of the video uh it just uh exiles all creatures and play planeswalkers three or less in play and in the graveyard everybody so yeah everybody. since you mentioned uro now i get it i was i was reading this card and i was like what 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 is this card doing uh then uh croxa and uro would be like the two mythics in uh, Teros block that would be seen in competitive standard and uh, having one of these in the sideboard would uh, put your mind at ease whenever there is multiple Uros in board even, but, even yeah. Ghost Rider can even kill Ghost Rider oh it can also Ghost yeah it can also deal with Anax and Mono Red so this is a good card, good card against Mono Red. I'm sorry, Mono Red, for giving Mono Black uh, tools and ideas. But with that in mind, wait, wait. Sean, oh, yeah. wait. Yeah. wait. <laughs> you can consider yourself lucky if you, you reach turn 5 against Mono Red. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, but uh, a sideboard option, yeah. I can see this in Black Decks being a sideboard option, but. Uh, I cannot say that this would be like, oh, this would be in every black standard deck uh, sideboards. But this is a good sideboard card. Not a main deck. Sideboard. And uh, with that in mind, Shadow's Verdict, Sean, what do you think? It's a good, it's a good card that uh, when many designers try to put with the previous sets as an answer to a standard or a common archetype. So I think this fits the the criteria of that card. So th yes, this is this is not a wasted rare, but it's a good card. It's a good card. It's a good card for and and it can stay until the it's 
duration or in standard that you have a wrath effect that can also answer um, graveyard and it can also answer um, things that like probably that don't die. Yeah. That don't die. Yeah. Oh, the Lurus um, decks would be the Lurus decks would be very angry with that card. So, you know the other one, the uh, the white one, uh, Heliod, Heliod, uh, yeah, Heliod. Dex. Oh yeah, oh no, ah the mono white yes. Andro Dex. Oh no, ah, he uh, very dirty. Heliod. Yeah, but it's very specific in very specific matchups. It's not, yeah. Uh, so it depends on you if you play it on the sideboard or not, or in the main. Yes, yes. Yeah, and uh, with that in mind. Uh, let's move on to our next rare and i i personally cannot decipher the art where the creature <laughs> is but this is skyclave shade and skyclave shade is a creature shade with one colorless and one black it has kicker of two colorless and one black it has three one and it says skyclave shade can't block if skyclave shade was kicked it enters the battlefield with Two plus one plus one counters on it and it has landfall and it says whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control if skyclave shade is in your graveyard and it's your turn you may cast it from your graveyard this turn sean asa ng shade okay sa art. uh you try to bring up its alternate art oh uh, i will I the, the... From Danny Dominic Mayer. Okay. Uh, view all prints. Oh, there it is. Okay. This 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 would be a much better card to review, and uh, it's already on screen. Okay. That's th that's the shade. But the the other one, the other card, uh, it looks terrible. <laughs> it looks terrible. Anyway, so Sean, what do you think of Skyclave Shade? Um, uh, it looks spicy, but what do you think? This is the. It looks spicy. It's definitely not the blood gas, but uh, it's a good two drop with three power. Yeah. It's a good two drop with three power, and if it dies, next turn you drop a land, cast it again, and yeah. late in the turn, drop a land, cast it for five, and it's a four two. Oh, wow. Uh, mono it's a four two. Black death. It's a mono. <laughs> Black decks are very <laughs> it's a, control. It's a very, it's a, it is a very cute card, and I think the designers are trying to shy away from the landfall mechanic of Blood Gas that you get to return it from the graveyard to the battlefield directly. That that was just too good. No, the, so what made, um, what made Blood Gas very good was the haste. If if it yeah. really had ten mana, so if you have a land, uh, ten, yeah, ten life, ten life or less. Threat. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think sh this shade is uh, very good against uh, good. Con yeah, yes. against control <laughs> decks. Control decks mm. have a nightmare against this card. Uh, even though glass casket is available, but you know, once this gets its groove on, you keep putting land drops and casting it, then the opponent will waste a card. Then eventually yes. you get to five mana. And you have a bigger shade that the opponent would definitely need to answer. Or you could just like cast it on turn two, it dies. Then you just wait for five mana. Then you then you, you land can, up. Can, you can even wait for five mana. You can go on turn three, drop a land, cast it again. Oh yeah. Oh, it's annoying. <laughs> it's an annoying shade. Okay, okay. Ah, now I get it. Oh, oh. Ah. And it's a good <laughs> It's a good Ah. Yes, and we can see this in play because we have a lot of cards cycling out, uh, going out of rotation like Lava Coil. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. This is, uh, yeah, so what's your only answer? Like, uh, the stomp? What's the stomp? What's the, the stomp, stomp, stomp? The 4-3? Uh. Four three adventure. Yeah, it does not remove the shade from the the green. In the game, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, um, and we've reviewed <laughs> a red uncommon, uh, but it's red, so 
if you're playing against red, then you uh, Skyclave Shade uh, would be very careful uh, if you play Skyclave Shade against red. But against green, against uh, blue, uh, there's not so much as a answer to removing creatures from the game. So Skyclave Shade is very good. I think it's very good. Yes. It... I think uh, uh, we're already in the upswing think... of good cards. Yes. I think the red has that uh, dual face card that deals one damage, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it would if it would die, exile it instead. I think that's a, that's an uncommon land yeah. land dual face card. Yeah. Spike field something. Spike field hazard. Yeah, yeah, that one, that card. Yeah. But it's still red, so you know if you're not <laughs> if you're if you're playing sky cleave shade and you're not against red, it's a good card. It's happy day. It will be. Yeah. This will be swinging for three every turn. This is a good card. Yeah, it's a good card. <laughs> so, with that in mind, uh, what do you think? Skyclave Shade, now that I've seen the true face of Skyclave Shade, uh, is this a yay, a nay, or a meh? This is a yay. This is definitely a yay. This is, this is a good card. It's a good card. Just as long as you have lands. It's very annoying. It's very <laughs> annoying. You have, oh. Yes, you have dual face cards. And it has yeah. Kicker. It has Kicker. If it, it did not have Kicker, it would still be a great card. Mm, uh, yes. Yeah, but with the Kicker in the late game, you could really ramp up your damage eventually with just a basic, uh, with just a land drop. Uh, okay, wait. I was wrong. I was uh, wrong. Do I said uh, when you do kicker, it's a four two, but it says two plus one plus one counter, so it's a five three. Yeah, five three. <laughs> it ends the game quickly. Oh my god! It ends the game quickly. Uh, five uh, man. The opponent has wasted enough resources to just deal with the three one. Then eventually you top deck a land. You have five mana. Ah. Five three. <laughs> oh, it's dirty. It's dirty. Uh, we gave it the w yay. So with that in mind, we're gonna move to our next rare. Uh, and this next rare is a very unique uh, card for me. But I feel this is a very very good card. And this card is so. Ah, it's a ah, tongue twister. Soul shatter. Soul shatter is an instant for two colorless and one black. And it, it says each opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalker they control. So Sean, what do you think about Soul Shatter? Ah uh, yes, okay. Uh, like I mentioned earlier with the Hagra Maling, that you were looking for a black card that deals with not only creatures but also planeswalkers, and I said that. And they have spoiled a lot of black cards that deals with both of them, but are very conditional. Yeah. This is one of them. This is one of them. Yeah, this is similar to the Innistrad. I know it's uh, Shadows of Innistrad card. That uh, it's also a three drop that says target player sacrifices a creature of its walker. Oh, wait, wait, wait. To the slaughter. Oh, to the slaughter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shadows but this one. Yeah. Uh, it, oh, but this one, it's restricted to the highest converted mana cost. But I don't think this make, makes a lot of difference if played in an early game because for the most part, it's just probably the only creature or Prince Walker they have. Yeah. Yeah. So th this is this is a good removal choice. Actually, I think this is a good removal choice. Uh, I can see this being put into decks like one of or two of just to directly deal with either the biggest threat or Ugin. Uh, in a ah, yes, I'm a... Uh, yeah, because mm -hmm. uh, it's when, uh, whenever you're in a precarious situation with, for example, uh, Ugin or a questing beast, the opponent can, you know, choose. The, the, that's the only downside that I really, really don't like about this card because the opponent has the option of choosing and if the board is like a token, a 2-2 two -two token and a Ugin, the opponent can al always choose the 2-2 two -two token. But since it's instant, you can uh, 
you can react immediately uh, whenever the opponent does something but uh, I can see this like a one of or a two of but you uh, I agree with you Sean that early early game this is a very good early game removal for threats yes yes uh, okay because especially like in an aggro deck if you're on the draw when they get to turn four they cast a four drop you react with the uh, soul shatter and you know he ah uh, ah no 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 okay each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalkers so if there's an ogin in play even you have a seven drop creature ogin ogin gets to be sacrificed okay yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, now, <laughs> now it is good. Now it is good. It deals with the most uh, dangerous threat in the board, uh, and uh, it it rises one point for me. Okay, now I get it. Okay, reading the card, explain. <laughs> right. And uh, do you have any more additional input about Soul Shatter, Sean? No, 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 yeah, so this is a yay, a nay, or a meh? This is a yay for um, blacks removal with a lot of black cards coming out of rotation. So this is a yay. This is a yay. Yeah, this is a yay and a good consideration card, uh, especially when I read it carefully the second time around. So uh, that rare uh, soul shatter is done and over, and we are now going to our last rare of the set and this is a very big shout out to one of uh, our OG mono black players because this card is named after him and this card is Mark Taborax Mark <laughs> Taborax Hope's Demise Taborax Hope's Demise is a legendary creature demon cleric with two colorless and one black for a two to flying creature and it says mark taburax hopes demise has lifelink as long as it has five or more plus one plus one counters on it whenever another non-token creature you control dies put a plus one plus one counter on mark taburax if that creature was a cleric you may draw a card if you do you lose one life so sean mark tabu is back but he is in card form. What do you think? Uh, this is good, actually. Uh, the only downside is that, based on its name, it should be a legendary. Yeah. So, can only play one. This is a cleric. Mm -hmm. It's good for party. And if you look at the, if you have spoiled white and green cards, and also white and green in standard, there there are cards that is built around. Plus one, plus one counters. Oh yeah. Uh, and you can t think around it in the absent colors. Although it's mostly it's just green and white. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, I think yeah, th this is actually good. And the cleric part in the bottom is just like probably a midnight reaper effect. So yeah. this is a bonus if you do, if you kill a cleric, you get the rocker and you lose yeah. one life. But that's just a draw card, but on top of that, it says any non-token creature dies, so it grows. So this is this is actually a good card. You can build around a, a plus one plus one counter deck on this actually. Oh. You know, oh. What Bane's Walker is that? Basri, Basri, Bane, Basri. Oh yeah, Basri cat. You oh, yeah. oh a black white cleric deck. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh my. Oh dear. Oh my. Ah. Oh, it's very nasty in here. Yeah. I can see it now. I can see it now. You can make an absent plus one plus one counter matters deck. I can also see a Rakdos sacrifice deck. Because you don't really need oh, 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 oh. uh Tama. I I think Mayhem Devil is already out. You see I know. Uh, but... Wait. Mayhem Devil. Yeah, Mayhem Devil is 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 he still in uh, rotation? War of the Spark. Oh, 
So the three the three slot would be very available along with Woe Strider. So if you're looking for sacrifice payouts, uh, Mark Taburak hopes demise uh, looks very enticing as a payout because you get to sacrifice your creatures with Woe Strider. Uh, <laughs> it gives plus one plus one counter to Mark Tabu, but right <laughs> now as I keep seeing this card all i can see is a edh mono black cleric deck because as i can remember in scourge block the all creatures block uh, there has been a cleric matters deck and i think this is the legendary creature that they're looking uh looking for their commander a mono black cleric and uh having a very big uh demon cleric would be very very nice and uh, another big shout out to onin for him uh, he will buy foil copies of mark taborax uh, heads up to everybody so uh yeah in standard uh, you need to have a sacrifice outlet or you know just for him to work and uh, since he is two two he is very easily dealt with with burn and removal with that in mind sean i think uh you have a uh, loss for words for our uh, missing friend which uh who i hope is uh, having uh is doing great and uh, with his fam big shout outs to mark tabu we miss you uh but with that in mind mark taburax hopes demise sean is this a yay a nay or a meh uh, I think this is a yay for what we have been discussing early in this video about um, jamming party decks, aggro party deck. This this is one of those cards that you would be indeed uh, putting in your deck. Yes, this is a good. Okay, and uh, that's that for our rares of the blacks uh, black cards in Sandika Rising. Uh, but before we uh, wrap up our podcast, uh, I'm going to ask Sean, what are the common or uncommon cards that has caught your eye and uh, you're hoping that we'll see play in any format going forward, Zendikar Rising? Okay, let's start. Let's start with the uncommon. We have two, two cards yeah. in uncommon. And the first one is actually very good. It's Blood Chips Thirst. Okay. Yeah. Lord. yeah. So, <laughs> Blood Chief's Thirst is a uh, black uh, is a sorcery with one black mana, and it says Kicker with two colorless mana and one black generic, uh, two generic and one black, and it says Destroy target creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost two or less. If this spell was kicked, instead destroy target creature or planeswalker. Ooh la la! Why this this? Why did this go <laughs> down to uncommon? Shocks. Why, Sean? Why is this your one of your Probably a sorcery? Oh. Yes. Oh. Uh, this is actually good because also uh, wait, land. This certainly this is no fetal push, yeah. but this is actually good in a lot of ways, especially in modern because we need cards to deal with red and six. Or no, 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 not more. Ah, uh, 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 red and six. Ren and Six. Ren and Six is the most played uh, two-drop play. Modern. In modern, yeah. In modern, yes, yes. This card deals with that. And if you have enough mana, four mana, it can deal with any creature or planeswalker. Yeah. So I think the sorcery part is not that big of a deal because since it's a one-drop, you can answer a Ren and Six even on the draw. Uh, then you can even answer a... a, a, a a one drop, any one drop of an opponent, one drop, two drop. So this is a very really, really good card. Blood Chips Thirst. Ah, Kicker is so good, especially with their current design. Uh, the Kicker cards, because if you compare the Kicker cards of before compared with the Kicker cards now, the Kicker cards now are so powerful. Uh, yeah, as you've said, ah, early, it can answer small creatures but if you get to four mana ah it can 
it is a very clean answer to anything that uh, you need to answer and all you need is lands oh man this is disgusting this card is disgusting so uh what other cards are you also uh, eyeing uh actually that the is second so the card that i look for in uh uncommon slot so what other cards do you think uh would see heavy heavy play in syndicate rising shot i only see like, like i said i only said there are two so the other one is uh, how do you pronounce it the list of form blight the aura ah. list list Little form blight. So okay. Uh, 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 little go. form Sorry. blight is a enchantment aura for one generic and one black mana, and it says enchant land, enchantment aura, enchant land. And when little form blight enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted land loses all land types and abilities and has tap it. Uh, creates a colorless ma mana and and pay one life. Add one mana of any color. So, Sean, what do you think? <laughs> it's a very good card because uh, what made Spreading Seas good when it was playable was it draws. It also draws you a card and deals with the opponent's lands. Uh... And it it was in blue, so you had to play to play blue in order to to put a land land hate on certain. Uh, certain lands you don't want and this is in black and like i said it also draws your card so that's a, that's a good thing and the thing is the text says loses all land types land types that's a good one and abilities abilities so you can target um who's the lands uh, okay it can target balakot it can target Castle Lock Twin. Oh no, the Castle Cycle. Oh dear. Oh my. It can target. It already had Cavern of Souls. Ah. Oh. Oh man. This is this yeah. is actually a good card. You can even if you want to play a like a removal type black type deck. It, you can play four of these. It can get you a card. Yeah, because it cycles it itself. Even... So. Even though you just enchant it to a non-basic car, a uh, uh, non-basic land, uh, even though it gives the opponent the ability to fix mana, but it pays one life, so you still get an upside of dealing damage. Uh, yeah, it looks good, and Tron is looking mighty, mighty sad because black, <laughs> because black now has a answer against Tron. Ugh. And also, with the rotation of shocklands, you can even, like, for example, an, an opponent has a swamp and a dragon skull summit, mm -hmm. and you're on the play. You can play this in his turn one swamp, and the dragon skull summit comes into play tap. Oh, 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 what a play! Uh, check land, uh, check, land, check land comes into play. You can, you, can, you, you want the color? You can pay one mana, pay one life. Because so yeah, this is the yeah. it has the draw a card ability. You're not losing man. You're not losing card advantage if you put it in a land. Even yes. even if you put it in your in your own land because you need the mana fixing. Uh, this is a very yes, good mana yeah. fixing card and also a very good hate card at the same time. Oh wow yeah. wow wow wow! It's very good. It's very good. That, that gets the wow and uh what other cards uh are you looking at in uh, black the black yeah. the last one and probably the best one is at the common okay. and, and it is it's feed feed the swarm oh wow we also have the same pick and uh feed the swarm is very spicy because Feed the Swarm is a sorcery for one colorless and one black. And it just says, destroy target creature or enchantment an opponent controls. You lose life equal to that permanent's converted mana cost. Ooh la la. E. E. What can you say about this common? Why is this common your pick? Ah, uh, come on. Like, 
if you've been playing Magic long enough, you would know that in the color pie, black has no answer to enchantments. It, it, wala, wala, yeah, there's, and probably about two years ago, they printed an enchantment removal for black, but it's not a targeted removal. It's uh, if you can search, you can search it. It's Farika's Libation. It's a yeah. it's a three to one instant yeah. that choose one target opponent sacrifices creature or target opponent yeah. sacrifices an enchantment. Uh, many people were forgiving on that because it's not a point enchantment removal for black. Yeah. It's still an enchantment removal, but not a point enchantment removal. Then they printed this. <laughs> then they printed this. I mean. I mean, even though you lose life, black has very many ways of gaining back life, and it's very yes. And uh, black players would gladly lose life just to like uh, in standard they could like remove a, a glorious anthem, a oh dear, uh, a Rem- uh, what do you call it? The the demigod for white. Oh wow. They can deal with um, uh, Elspeth conquers death. Yes. Oh, <laughs> God, this is nasty. This common is very nasty, and I have to agree. And we will give it the magic wow <laughs> approval. We will see this either in sideboards or main decks, especially with Teros block going along in uh, current standard. We will see enchantments. Um, more compared than uh, the previous uh, standard rotation and uh, black is very hap- happy with having his very own enchantment removal targeted targeted enchantment removal ah, yes that's you, you, uh, targeted you. targeted you. and with that uh wait yeah wait you forgot the very thing that black is having trouble with it's shark typhoon Oh, oh my god, six life, no problem. Just get that shark away. Ah, yes, shark typhoon. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Black blue control. Esper control is back. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to every oh, yeah. Esper control deck player. I hope your mana base will help you. But, you know, uh, you have a enchantment removal in black. So you can now go away from white and go to black blue instead. <laughs> and with that in mind, that wraps up our set review for black and Sendika Rising. Uh, before we go, Sean, uh, any shout out? Any shout out uh, before we wrap up this podcast? Uh, I would also like to give a shout out to Tonton because. Um, Amidst this pandemic, uh, we shop and we get to play Paper Magic again, play Modern, play EDH, play probably any almost the board games you wanted. So yeah, salamat. Thank you very much, Ton. Yes, thank you, Ton Ton. And uh, I personally would like to thank you for spearheading our MTG Davao Hey Joe Gaming Tournament of Power during the pandemic. And uh, without you, without uh, spearheading, uh, especially the pairings, uh, you know, our pandemic would have been s- much different compared to uh, compared to having the tournament. Because uh, okay, thank and, you. And with that, thank you very much. And any other shout outs? Wala kang plug in. Ah, yeah, shout out to uh, Imwanax. Thank oh, you wow. for organizing this. Oh. Yeah, giving color to our chat reviews. And, oh, you know, uh, if m- most of us watching this video or watching the the spoilers, uh, they wouldn't have any idea of certain cards that has interaction with this, interaction with that. Oh, and watching videos like this would give them an idea. That, oh, I'm work in today. I'm work in today. Yes. yes, because... This is a very informative video. Yeah. Even though you can't finish the whole video... You just go with the mythics and the rares. At least you have an idea, uh, especially going into pre-release. Uh, big shout out to everybody who is still watching this part of the show that the pre-release is coming very, very soon. 
and we have to follow our health protocol guidelines uh, for everybody to enjoy the pre-release and you know a little bit of uh, you know knowledge is power and uh, uh, knowing is half the battle and and yes yeah. when with that uh, we end our podcast we end our set review thank you very much Sean Braga thank you to everyone who is still watching up to this point uh, if you like the video thank you thank you yeah thank you and uh, I will see you in the shop with the face mask and the face shields and all and uh, with that this ends our podcast thank you for everybody for watching and until the next time I will see you in the next video I love you one million. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night, guys. Bye-bye.